Hello, this is Virgil Labrador, Editor-in-Chief of Satellite Markets and Research, and we're here at the IBC 2014 in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, with Timofey Abramov. He's the uh, Commercial Director of Satellite Operator Intersputnik, uh, based in uh, Russia, and Gregory Baitzer. He's the Director of the Technical Department of the Intersputnik. So, um, for the also for the benefit of our viewers who are not too familiar with Intersputnik, uh, Timofey, or can you... Uh, give a brief overview of your company and what you do? Oh yeah, sure. We are an international organization based in the United Nations, established in 1971 and currently consists of 26 countries. Mm -hmm. Our main activity is uh, leasing satellite capacity and making joint satellite project with uh, satellite operators. So we currently lease about 3 gigahertz of capacity mm -hmm. and have some joint frequency project implemented already using our friends in ABS company and uh, Amos company, and uh, we also are in the process <coughs> of doing such projects in the future. Um, we hopefully that uh, this will help the whole satellite community to grow using uh, our help and uh, our company. So currently, you don't operate your own satellites. Yes, uh, you lease from others, or you have partnerships with others. But do you plan to have your own satellite in the future? We are constantly uh, evaluating such a possibility mm -hmm. and uh, some things are stopping us from doing that because now we are currently friends with every operator in the world and don't want to be their competitors. Mm -hmm. Secondly, frankly speaking, we are a small company, just 40 people, so we don't have to possess TTNC and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, But these plans are constantly on the table. We mm -hmm. evaluating the position and uh, we might have started this process by using half a satellite or maybe that, but we're constantly working about on that issue. Yes. Actually, that was one of the uh, strategic choices we made uh, quite a number of years ago, that uh, at least at this stage we see it more efficient to uh, cooperate how we do with a number of operators based on the uh, orbital spectrum resources that mm -hmm. we have. Uh, you probably know that uh, back in the end of 90s we had a joint venture uh, with Lockheed Martin, mm -hmm. LMI, mm -hmm. uh, under which uh, LMI-1 satellite was launched to 75 East mm -hmm. and uh, Intersputnik operated part of capacity on that satellite. Mm -hmm. And actually this uh, had the continuation uh, in cooperation with ABS after it acquired LMI uh, with Amos Spacecom, mm -hmm. 17 East also using our orbital uh, resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that there is a benefit in the approach that we're taking, that first we are securing uh, certain capacity on uh, satellites that are being uh, launched and operated by our partner mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a benefit for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it is obvious that lack of uh, available spectrum rights in the orbit is one of the major barriers to the entry uh, to certain new markets uh, with the new satellites. Right. We help our partners to get access to uh, frequencies over the regions that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So uh, it benefits both of us. Right. And for the immediate future, we see that uh, we will be pursuing the same approach, uh, maybe with uh, new partners, mm -hmm. definitely over new markets. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty optimistic about right. developing that. Now, Gregory, uh, as technical director, uh, you know, the industry is changing so fast right now. The customer demands are changing. Uh, are you involved in any, uh, like, say, innovative uh, solutions that you're providing to your customers? Well, uh, planning to? Yes, uh, certainly. Uh, I think I'll talk about the again the frequency uh, things that I'm uh, personally mostly involved with. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a sort of a forced situation because of the lack of the frequency resource in the orbit because mm -hmm. so many uh, satellites are currently operating, so many newcomers uh, are there, mm -hmm. and uh, the frequencies are becoming scarce. And so what we see in our experience is that uh, there are many systems coming to the market starting to use some non-traditional frequencies. Mm -hmm. uh, K-band has already become quite a traditional band, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of new satellites are coming with the planned bands mm -hmm. for FSS operation, something which uh, was not uh, widely used mm -hmm. uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. But right now, even some of our partners with whom we are uh, using the orbital locations are building purely planned band satellite. And uh, we see that the attitude towards these bands uh, is changing. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, it's one of the topics we will be uh, 
dealing with uh, working with in the nearest future. Right. Thank you. Uh, Timothy, you said you have 26 member countries, right? Yeah, and they're right. very diverse uh, from Cuba to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do, do you think that uh, model will change? Because you've been the uh, membership organization since you began in 1971, right? And right. some of the membership organizations like Intelsat, Immersat have changed their business models. Do you think you'll be changing that? model in the future? Not in the near future, definitely, but uh, if we are going to the way to use our own satellites on the orbit that we became purely commercial operated like mm -hmm. like Intelsat changed its uh, status from international to pure commercial. Mm -hmm. So I don't think in the nearest of five or seven years we'll be on that way, mm -hmm. but uh, who knows, mm -hmm. it is uh, the next step, every satellite operator is coming through and uh, I think I in the in the end of the days, I mean, like mm -hmm. twenty years, yes, possibly. Now, uh, commercially, uh, your revenues. Uh, what percentage is Russia, and what percentage is uh, other markets? Uh, what are your biggest markets? Well, it's not geographically markets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's we try to divide our markets like for DTH and uh, telecommunication services. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are the largest DTH capacity provider in Russia. We are leasing a lot of capacity from Utilsat and ABS, mm -hmm. mostly dedicated for that services and are planning to use more. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just think that three of our main categories of clients is uh, broadcasting slash DTH operators. Secondly, mm -hmm. it's GSM backhaul. Mm -hmm. And the third is uh, VSAT and CPC channel, so it's purely telecommunication. Mm -hmm. We have customers, um, Russia, it's Central Asia, Middle East, uh, Africa, Europe, and we are desperately seeking for new opportunities in uh, Southeast Asia, in Latin America, and uh, looking for that. Well, you know, uh, we, there's also a lot of changes in the global uh, situation right now, and uh, there's some questions about, you know, the, uh, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, uh, changing situation in, 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 in the region where mm -hmm. you're based at, Russia and Eastern Europe, etc. So is that affecting your business at all? Well, frankly speaking, I can say it's uh, affecting our business. Mm -hmm. There is still huge lack of capacity over mm -hmm. ex our countries and Russia mostly. And we uh, we are constantly expanding our customers' uh, uh, lines and megabits ratio. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, the fact that some of the biggest satellite operators are looking at that market, and uh, we expect that uh, also Russian launches will help us, mm -hmm. but prices are not going down. I think that we are in position of seller's market, not buyer's market right mm -hmm. now. Okay, so finally, uh, maybe Gregory, you can uh, add, uh, you know, what, what can we expect? Uh, what other new things will be coming up in the next few years, and then you can also say from the bigger perspective. Well, uh, for Inter Sputnik, uh, we see that the next major step will be uh, further launches together with our partner operators mm -hmm. and major expansion of our operation, uh, operations uh, further away from the traditional region, which is Russia-centric, mm -hmm. uh, towards Latin America and uh, Far East mm -hmm. uh, Asia. We're very active uh, in this respect mm -hmm. and uh, we treat these two regions as uh, the regions for our immediate development. Uh, actually, I think Gregory told everything that I would like to say that we are desperately waiting for the new launches. Mm -hmm. We have already in the process of signing contracts for launches which appear in the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. And we are desperately looking for new markets for us, not only in the sphere of uh, client rotate, but geographically. It's also a way to look, look at it. Right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tim and uh, Gregory. Uh, and for all the news and information on the global satellite business, including InterSputnik, the, you can always uh, follow us at uh, www.satellitemarkets.com. Thank you.